Alright, hey guys. So you know when you look at this dolphin poster, it sort of looks like it's moving. It's one of those type of things with the cut plastic lines so that, you know, you can, like, see a difference in the hills and valleys. I don't know if it's working on this camera, but, you know, you're supposed to be able to... Anyways, the point is that all you need to do is... <clears throat> Excuse me here for a second, I gotta turn the camera around. You just have, um polymer you can do it with acrylic too it doesn't have to be expensive even though polymer is not expensive either and you just have way lasers behind it that oscillate up and down fuck you pay me um in wavelengths to kind of create hills and valleys of light through the different thicknesses of polymer uh that are slightly different mixes to where they're you know like affect the light differently as it you know like for example one like spreads it fuck you pay me uh, one like, you know, uh, creates like a backlight to it, you know what I mean? And then like, uh, one like, concentrates the individual light back into like solidified edges of the image or something, you know what I mean? However many layers you need, fuck you, pay me. Uh, this is my technology. Anyways, um, and then that creates an image that is really good looking and looks 3D to you and you can put it, here's the first usage, in those big old thick boxes they put outside of movie theaters and put the posters in. You just fill up the space with like a vent fan on top and bottom up that pulls through to, you know, cool it, fuck you pay me. And then uh, you have a uh, fuck you pay me on top of fuck you pay me. You see what I mean? Fuck you pay me. Um, what was the last part of this? Uh, just that it creates a really good effect and it's an alternative so that you can see something 3D or one of the actors on the poster and get a better idea of what you're going to experience in the movie with explosions and stuff in an actual scene. You know, like, th yeah. for a poster. Are you going to talk about how you just set a regular bright QLED screen on the ground and then have the crystal around that it just projects up into. Yeah, you put you could put any type of gas screen there, you know, yeah. really. I mean, I, I don't know what QLED's actually made out of. It could be upper atmosphere gases. It could be earth gases, you know what I mean? Fuck you, pay me, because I know that you haven't thought of earth gases, so it's upper atmosphere. Yeah. Um, yeah, you could make a butane propane screen. You could even refill it with like little <laughs> like CO2 cartridges or anything. Fuck you, pay me. Uh, and then that would be extra excitable and look extra like pixelless because it's so gaseous. And then you can have like cartoons with even less, how do I describe it, like necessary pixels, like super pets. You could have them all standing on a rock or something with pines behind them and they're all majestic and, you know, using the plexiglass triangle I was talking about, or sorry, yeah. pyramid, you, you know, with the flat bottom so that it's projected up from just the brightness of the screen onto the plexiglass and looks really good. If you take a look at this Wonder Woman poster, people are so fucking like caveman compared to the 1800s. This would have, in the 1800s, been projected from the points on the W. There would be lasers inside of resin. And then it would glow, and it would be resinously glowing. And then this would be like a wax figurine with, like, lights inside of it. So she's, like, glowing with superpowers. And then they put, like, actual, like, clothing on her, on the statue, the him, her... And it would look amazing. And this is shit, you know? Look at this comparison. It's just cardboard. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I want to go back to good definition yeah, things. Yeah, good, good, you know, event props. Yeah. You know? That's For good all. movies. Yeah. And I want to be paid to design them. I need to be paid in some way. Fucking choose, you fucking shits. And give me some goddamn money. Or more things. I need a steam room real bad. Yeah. I guess I should bring this up just because uh, I want cheaper screens to come out quicker. Well, here's it's really simple. I just wanted to point it out. All you need to do is just take um, xenon, argon, he and helium. And, um, I mean, uh, it's a little bit more dangerous, but since it's all contained, I mean... It's just upper atmosphere gases which make images clearer and they're easily excited, excited by particulates. Uh, you could also take oxygen and put it in there, but you need to stabilize that with, you know, maybe some sort of other frequency of energy that's really special, because oxygen has a tendency to excite too much into electricity and maybe like have an electrical explosion, so that have to be highly maintained. 
And that's how you make a basic uh, QLED gas screen. As compared to QNED, which is orange acid and polymer, you know, with various metals sprayed into it a little bit to make it like a sensor in reverse and have good, you know, bright light in it. Um, you have to backlight that, so that's not as good either. It's, it's just better, and of course all these technologies will be combined for movie theaters was the point. Um, how you get black light? I'm trying to think of what gas produces black light. I'm pretty sure xenon and argon do produce black light in a certain frequency, so you got it right there. And if you were going to do earth gases, I'd advise butane. Uh, butane but, has every color. Now. It has every color, but like I always say, you're going to be sticking a little, like, comedically, like the equivalency of a paintball cartridge into your screen occasionally and going into it to refill it. But maybe that's better for long-term lifespan overall. Yeah. Who knows? I'd have to do some testing and you'd have to give me my screens and fucking pay me so I know which ones uh, actually work because I'm the one fucking coming up with them. So you think I don't know how to fucking make them? You really fucking think I don't know how to test them if I'm the fucking one who came up with the fucking idea? I think you're a bunch of fucking idiots. The end. Suck my dick and balls. Grant had the idea of static cling, static rubbing somehow, maybe being used with butane in combination with a, like, some sort of, I'm trying to think this through, like, I want to have, you know, the shape of the crystal uh, of the Rubik's Cube that I had got, I saw at Ross recently, it's all, you know, starred. Um, I want to drag all the different possible colors out of butane, because it has all the different gases. Uh, to the different star point angles as necessary to create different beautiful huge spectrums that interact naturally um, to create the in-between colors that are even more accurate for you know what the data is demanding from better cameras of the future and um, I don't know yeah um, Maybe lasers going through the butane can excite it, the different aspects of it in different ways. You know? Yeah, all I was thinking is, um, uh, you just, every camera needs like a gas covering for their sensor True. of some sort of high upper atmosphere gas. And, uh, fuck you, pay me. They should just be unique and dynamic for each camera cinema line. Like the actual lenses you screw on could even have different gas mixtures in them and you yeah. could test with all the cl classic cliche upper atmosphere gases that are highly motile because you have to see for some reason movement of light even through gases yeah. right in front of the camera will always make it see everything better it's just a proven fact well yeah butane seems to contain all the gases kind of compressed into one yeah swatch. that's why it's a little better than propane yeah so yeah, um, if you had like what you're saying, butane between two charged screens, then you could, you know, compare the charges of the two pieces of glass or whatever, crystal or whatever, and then those comparisons would um, drag the colors into a starred pattern out of the butane. Yeah. From front and back, you know, electromagnetically. Yeah, you'd have to charge the, the material that it's within. And that's the most beautiful, I, I definitely gotta say. I'm addicted to butane, you know, screens. They're real nice. Yeah, so they're just electrical magnets that, that you know, take a charge and then yeah. rip the color. <laughs> yeah, but that means you gotta masterfy, or masterize whatever the... Like ionic glass that, you know, you know, instead of it tinting, it's got to just generate different frequencies of electricity so that it interacts with the butane on a, you know, sandwich between the two. So then it tints the butane into different colors, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, it's kind of like sucking into the butane from either side, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Negative positive polarity, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, so I was just thinking about, you know, how I was saying, you know, QLED gas screens operate, fuck you, pay me. Well, there's this concept that, 
like within the Q lead gas, there's um, how do I describe it? Like, uh, what was I trying to say here? Uh, oh, there has to be depth. You know what I mean? It has to be enough for the gas to move. So if you have a decent amount of depth then you could, I mean, even with software on the current screen we have, you could update it to, to different frequencies or something. I'm not sure which type we have, even if it's butane, it might work. It might be too rough, that's why I was advising Xenorm Argon. Well, once again, the example of this dolphin poster I have right here. Um, it's one of those effects where it has, you know, cut lines, and that's the same thing for the 3D glasses we, we were talking about that we would use that would have colored lenses for different movies, and then just be 3D in general, of course, without it is that like the screen would take a charge and the gas would go into hills and valleys dynamically with a rougher charge like how xenomargon can really take that and like you know and helium of course so then it's 3d because the gas is being pushed in like lines different directions more dynamically than this where it's just you know sort of a static effect because it like adjusts with software for it so then you have 3d for 3d like glasses but at home on your qled screen you know what i mean and then that's pretty fucking amazing right there